Will I be streaming Bayonetta 3 when it comes out? I've never played a Bayonetta game. Also, do we really need something to even further exacerbate the, uh, the Coomers in chat? I don't know. I feel like we get enough of that. Bayonetta's not even my type. She's, she comes across like a dominatrix. I'm not a submissive. I don't have any particular affinity for women in extremely high heels and leather. Yeah, but she's our type? Yeah, well. Bro, she's like nine feet tall. Well, I do like tall women. Not wanting a mommy dummy to dummy you. Yeah, I'm sorry, I just, I don't have a mommy dummy kink. I was trying to think what a Bayonetta would be like if it was like a girl who was my type. I'm not entirely sure. Subby short stack trickster Bayonetta. Well, I like, I like tall women just fine. I think I just like alt girls. Not gonna lie, if I'm browsing through Tinder, I mean, you know, I have criteria and all, but for the most part, if I see like, Colored hair, septum piercings, whatever else. I'll just swipe right on that, you know? Besides, there's a pretty good overlap between, like, girls who look like that and girls who are left-leaning and queer and shit, so, you know, whatever. It's like, just a, a, a simple, quick, approximate, and good in bed. Well, sometimes. You know, I understand this is an, an old hat. You know, this is, this is very much a not-original opinion, but... There are unfortunately still quite a few women who believe that the, you know, the greatest service they can provide in, 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 in sex is to starfish. To just simply lay there and, uh, passively enjoy the experience. This is of course not the case, but some people seem convinced this is the case, so. Right, the pillow princess phenomena, of course. As it's known. It's the worst experience. Well, it's not life ruining or anything, you know, but you can... And do a little, you know, you can put a, put a little effort in. It's not going to hurt. I hope it doesn't hurt. It should, shouldn't. Pillow princesses concern me. Well, you know, it's just... I think a lot of girls are just kind of embarrassed to participate in sex. You know what I mean? Like, they, like oh, there, are, there are girls who, who enjoy sex quite a lot. They want to participate in it. But the, you know, the act of showing enthusiasm just rings some alarm bells on the whole, like, internalized sex negativity, slut shamey kind of stuff, so... I think it's a not entirely uncommon phenomena. I mean, we are taught to be passive. Uh, yeah. That is true. Now, whatever the case may be, this is definitely less of a problem now than it was, say, I'm, I'm guessing, like, 20 or 30 years ago. I, I mean, I wasn't even around 30 years ago, but, uh, I am under the impression that, uh, we have more... more loud and proud behavior vis-a-vis... -vis Chicks enjoying sex. Depends on where you live, that's true. I've never tried to go Tinder farming in, like, Nebraska or Kentucky or whatever. Or Alaska? Yeah. Doesn't doesn't Alaska have, like, it's, it's like, overwhelmingly men, right? Because there are so many guys who go up there to work on oil rigs and shit. Like, it's such an industry-focused state. Like, 55, 45? Can somebody find the number on that, what the ratio of men to women is in, um, in Alaska? 108 men for every 100 women? Gotcha, gotcha, thank you. Isn't Tinder pay to win? I don't have Tinder gold, if that's what you're asking. Met my wife on Tinder? Nice, congratulations. Met my wife on an app too, it does happen. Well, I think that the meeting online or through an app or whatever is the most common way of meeting your significant other these days. Which makes sense. It's uh, pretty convenient, not gonna lie. Pretty easy way of going about that. I found my wife on Ashley Madison. Ain't that the cheating app? That was the joke? That oh, was a joke? Okay, well, gotcha. I found someone else's wife on Ashley Madison. Eh, it's been known to happen. Wasn't it sued into oblivion? Oh, I don't know. Probably shouldn't cheat in your significant other. Seems like a mean thing. Then that site get hacked and leaked. Now that I do remember. Don't cheat in your spouse's folks. That is bad praxis. Yeah. Isn't it worse to find your parent, Ashley Madison? Okay, so for Ashley Madison, right, it's, are both of the pe- Like, if it's a guy and a girl, like, are both of them supposed to be cheating, or is one of them cheating, and the other person's just looking for unfaithful- Okay. I understand that a lot of people, this is, you know, uh, there's so much of this fetish shit online, like, cuckolding, cheating, whatever. Just not my thing. Um... You know, I, I get all this. I just, it seems to me like if I were to have sex with somebody, like a person who's doing so while cheating, like this seems like the worst experience. I don't know. Like it just seems like you're involving yourself in a bunch of unnecessary drama. 
if you're fucking, like, an unfaithful wife or whatever, like, what if her husband's a psychopath who wants to fucking fight you or some shit? You know, like, I don't know. If you want to end up forming a relationship with this lady, well, you know she's not, uh, very diligent, uh, in, in, in maintaining faithful relationships. Fuck, we're getting our ass kicked. I think that's the point. Yeah, maybe. Actual drama baiting shit. A lot of people like looking for drama. I don't get them. Bonk them or pass? Pass. But let them know that they're lucky. A lot of people, they look for this drama. Like, this shit isn't entertaining enough. In my opinion, okay, people who go looking for these, like, messy relationship drama business whatevers, you know? It's because they have, pardon my harsh language here, no personality and are incapable of entertaining themselves. And petty human drama is the only thing that can sustain them, you know? There's nothing wrong with enjoying drama when it happens, but if you're going out of your way looking for wrecks of relationships just so you can have something to do, you know how people are like, oh, you know, we haven't even argued yet, I like to start arguments sometimes so something happens? How bored are you? Do you have nothing better to do? Why not watch a movie with your partner? Like, like, do you, is there no better solution? Oh, things are boring, right? Okay, then fuck them. I don't know. <laughs> There's gotta be a better solution to your, your conundrum. I've heard people say they want to lie to their partner about cheating just to get the reaction. Well, yeah, this is like insecurity shit. Insecurities, man. No hate to the, uh, to the fine people in the audience, but, uh, you know, People with insecurities really have to understand that that shit is nothing but a liability in a relationship. It's not cute. Being insecure is not cute, you know? Media plays this off. Like, listen, if you're insecure, you're only human, right? You know, don't freak out over it. Okay, whatever. Life is life. What are you, you know, what are you gonna do? But you have to acknowledge it's a character flaw. Media always tries to make insecurity out to be some cute, quirky thing. Like, oh, your girlfriend likes constant reassurance that you love her? How cute. No, it's not. It's not. It's not cute. It's actually, it's very frustrating if you care about somebody and you have to keep reminding them. It's not cute. You never had friends like this? Hey, here's a sentence no one has ever said. Hey, I love it when this friend of mine keeps saying that I don't actually like them because they're clearly trying to bait a compliment out by saying things they know aren't true. I love it. I love it when my friend, uh, it, it, you know, it, it keeps insistently creating discourse which requires me to comfort them and reassure them of things they've been told 8,000 times. This is great. I love reminding my boyfriend that I love him and I tell him constantly. There's a pretty big difference between enjoying telling your partner that you love them and your partner begging to be reminded that you love them nonstop. Those are very, very different things. Those are just incomparable, I would say. There's nothing wrong with telling your partner you love them. But sometimes it's hard to assess when somebody's being genuine or is just saying reaffirming things to shut you up. If you feel like a person is just giving you bullshit to shut you up, why would asking them, like, an eighth time get you a more reliable or worthwhile answer? I don't get, I don't get it. Also, who cares? You can't get your sense of self from anyone else, whether or not they're being genuine. Well, yeah, at the at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's like any with any other cognitive process, you know, the ultimate bottleneck in your ability to feel loved by the people around you is you because it is a feeling that you have, which means that you have to perceive other people's perceptions of you. Meaning that if there's a problem with your process of perception or emotional interpretation, and it really doesn't matter what other people say, every compliment will be thought to be insincere, you know, you're gonna second guess every kind word. Make sure to read the Berserk manga DM. Uh, that's the good shit right there. Basically, all I'm asking, okay, you guys gotta be cool dudes, right? It's hard when you're constantly reaffirm the opposite. Okay, no more sad posting during this fundraiser, okay? Listen, okay, oh, oh, okay, what you guys need to do, here's a hot tip, last thing I'll say, okay? For people with lower confidence, all right, here's what you need to do, okay? You need to be better at reframing the way in which you perceive people's apparent dislike or disinterest towards you, okay? So, here's what I do, and I do this naturally. This is not a deliberate cognitive process. It is just my brain's default state. If you ever think a person doesn't like you or isn't interested in you, I have no idea why you motherfuckers instantly jump to it being about how something's wrong with you, okay? So many people, it's like, 
oh, this person doesn't like me. Well, I must suck. You know, this person's not interested in me. Well, there must be something wrong with me. Why? I don't understand. Unfathomable to me. Uh, what, what what makes these connections in your head? It does. It makes no sense at all. Think of your life when you don't respond to a text, when you don't want to hang out with somebody, you know? Isn't it, like, overwhelmingly just because you're busy and your brain doesn't have room for it? Isn't that how most of us are these days? It's not because they specifically dislike you, you stupid fucking idiot. You self-centered prick. Like, the whole world doesn't revolve around you. Jesus Christ. They have a big life, or they can probably barely handle its contents to begin with. And they, they, you, they, they don't respond to your texts, they don't want to hang out. And in your head, you're like, oh, it must be because of their specific and strong feelings or deliberate disinterest in me. Shut up. Jesus, you fucking narcissist. This is what people say when they say that shyness is a form of narcissism. It's a little bit simplified, you know, but I think there's an underlying truth there. Oh, my friends were gonna make plans with me, but then they didn't or they forgot. Dipshits, how many times have you bailed on other people's plans because you were just overwhelmed that day? How many times have you done that? Come on. And was it because you hated everyone else? No, shut up. It's just life. It's just life happens. But you make it this big, oh, you know, it's you. Oh, me, me, me. Well, it must be because of me. No, it's not. Just shut up, okay? Even if a person does specifically dislike you, like fucking so, who cares? You have any idea how many people dislike me? Who cares? I'm great. Their dislike of me doesn't affect me. It doesn't even reflect on me. Martin Luther King Jr. was disliked by a majority of Americans when he was killed. What, are you gonna let other people's perception of you dictate your sense of self-worth? If is, are you letting Martin Luther King's go- you, he's up there in heaven, you know? Oh, nobody likes me. And, you know, the other ghost angel people are like, Oh, well, you did the whole civil rights thing, and that was cool. And he was like, No, people dislike me. What are you doing? Shut up! What, do you think- you, you, you think you're better than MLK? You a fucking idiot? Dumbass? Shut up. Cultivate internal self-worth, okay? You buffoon. This thinking can sometimes help with insecurities, but definitely not always. Well, the problem is, is that insecure people most of the time only really become insufferable when their insecurities take hold, not because of the initial traits they're insecure about. Or to put it another way, the most annoying thing about insecure people is almost always that they're insecure, not that they're, um, not the characteristics they're insecure about, you know? You see this all the time. What's more annoying, you know? Uh, the girl having one zit on her forehead or her not shutting the fuck up about how having one zit on her forehead ruins her complexion, you know? What's more annoying? Uh, the person who talks maybe a little bit too much or who constantly apologizes for talking too much. Like, I know what I'd pick. Insecurities are... Oh, like, you think it makes you self-aware. Oh, well, they won't mind that, you know, I want them to at least know that I know that I'm being annoying. Nobody cares. Nobody can- no- nobody- if you're- if you're being a little irritating, nobody is relieved. When you're like, oh, okay, well I know that I'm irritating and I'm sorry about it. Nobody cares. All- it's just irritating. You know that because this has happened to you, hasn't it? There's a critical difference between making a mistake and owning up to it, and seeking other people's approval and affirmation by acknowledging the existence of a personality trait which wouldn't have been that apparent otherwise, but you are now currently drawing attention to. Do you understand? There's a difference between actual apology, actual growth, actual improvement, and, you know, let's, let's lampshade my personality flaws to make sure other people can't accuse me of not being aware of them. People apologize, they apologize. I hate hearing apologies. Nobody who apologizes for that stuff actually stops doing it, you know? You ever notice that? Nobody does. You apologize for actions, not for traits. When you apologize for traits, you're gonna keep doing them. They're traits. They're a part of how you act. An action, you know, you step on somebody's toe, you're rude for a second. Okay, apologize for that. Fine, but... Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I don't know when to stop talking. Okay? You should have stopped talking before you started the apology. That would have been an excellent time to develop that trait. Plus, 
after you apologize, now the other person feels bad for pointing it out, you know? If a person's talking too much at a party or a social gathering, you know, like they're being too chatty or whatever, I can, I like, I can say like, whoa, hold on there, okay? Let, let's, let's let someone else talk there, you know? Like, you, I can play it off nice and light. But if they're like, oh, I'm sorry for talking so much, and then they keep doing it, like, well, fuck. Now I know they're insecure about it. So if I bring it up, you know, now it's, uh, oh, that was a shortcut. Fuck yeah. Now that I, you know, I know they're insecure about it now, so now it's like this delicate subject. I have to be like, hey, remember when you talked to me about how you think you talk too much? Well, you're doing a bit of that right now. And, you know, I was just thinking you should, you know, just maybe tone it down a little bit. I'd rather kill myself than say that to somebody. Fuck. Miserable. Miserable. I'd say as a general rule, don't apologize for anything unless you can commit to the pledge of not doing it again or of generally being better. I think that's a good rule. There's really no point to the apology otherwise, besides temporarily assuaging someone's feelings and giving them the impression that you're a better person than you are. Don't lie to them. Does this apply to people who mistakenly misgender a dead name that make a big deal out of apologizing but still keep getting it wrong? Yes. I'm speaking for all trans people, okay? If you dead name or misgender, curtly apologize, work to do better. If you do it again, curtly apologize, work to do better. Don't make a big show out of it, and therefore guilt the trans person into feeling like they have to, you know, engage with your apologetics by, um, by placating you, you know. Oh, this must be so hard for you, the social stigma of not gendering me correctly. Let me comfort you in these moments. Yeah, no. Yeah, you don't even need to say sorry, just say, oops, my bad. Oh. Oop. Oopers. Oopie doopsie. Here, I'll I'll give you an example that can better that can better hold the attention of your uh Oh sh oh fuck! Here, here's an example that'll engage your attention, okay? Maybe this is a situation you've been in before, okay? If a guy nuts too quickly, or you know, a girl, if if she has a, a penis. Which a lot of them do. Someone someone nuts too quickly, okay? And there's, not, there's nothing inherently wrong with nutting quickly, you know? Depending on the mood, the situation, refractory time period, you know? It, not inherently a bad thing. But but let's say it's- let's say a person nuts too soon, okay? You can just, um, just imagine whatever context it's in, you know? It's, it's too soon to be nutting. Okay, right, so fine. Um, now, um, which- so imagine you're with- okay. A lot of you aren't attracted to men. Let's just say it's it's a it's a girl. No, I don't want to be like fetishizing here. Look, okay, it's a a person you're attracted to, and they've got a penis. They come too quickly, okay? And you, we're we're visualizing two scenarios here, okay? And one of them in in the first scenario, okay? They're like, oh wow, guess I was really pent up, huh? Uh, uh, here, give me give me ten minutes. Uh, you know, I'll, like eat you out or something. Uh, we'll get right back to it. You know, something like that. Like, real cool and casual. Already, you can tell this is the good option. And then you have, like, on the other option, you have, like, the stereotype. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. This never happens to me, I swear. Oh, you know, like, if I was, if I was in a, and I don't bottom, so I, I won't be, but if I was in a situation where somebody was talking to me like that, I would kill myself. Shortly after killing them. I do not subject me to this. Um horrible. Uh you know, in 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 almost all instances, cool, confident, nonchalant surpasses the pathetic attempt at self-awareness that insecure people engage in in an effort to preemptively disarm people who might notice mistakes they've made. As a straight dude, I've had it happen twice to the same person when I was 20. I wanted to kill myself because I've never had that problem with other people. Realized in hindsight it was because I wasn't that into them, wanted to get it over with. Interesting. I don't know if that's ever... I don't know if that's a thing that would happen. I, I've only ever come too soon. Like, too soon, too soon. Like, you know, inconveniently too soon once. And it was the very first time I had uh, bareback vaginal sex. Um, which, as far as I'm concerned, is a fair excuse. Which is exactly what I said to her, by the way. God, if I could only give you guys an ounce of my, uh, my, my natural confidence. Oh, what easy lives you would live. You know, I'm, I'm with, I'm in the back of my car with, uh, with my fuck buddy. And for the first time, you know, no condom. Ooh, big deal. I nut in 40 seconds. How can I not? 
uh, 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 you know, great pussy, phenomenal. And she's like, oh, you're done? And I was like, god damn right I'm done. You feel great. You're welcome. May <laughs> sex later, of course, but, you know. You just, I mean, what are you gonna do, feel bad about it? The one you met on the bus? Ah, people uh, keeping their loyalty. Genuine question, not disagreeing. What about people who feel insecure and disarmed because they were abused? How much you tolerate? So, abuse is an explanation for coping mechanisms, but that doesn't mean those coping mechanisms are necessarily good. Like, abuse will lead people to engage in some behaviors because it's their way, the disarming was a way to protect them from abuse in the past or whatever. But like, and, 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 you know, that can be like a legit explanation for that behavior. You know, if a, if a person, keep in mind, I'm not saying that you're a piece of shit human being if you're insecure or anything. Like, if a person's overly apologetic and they've experienced abuse in the past, I'm not gonna go like, hey, you fucking, you piece of shit, you're baiting compliments for me, you fucking piece of shit. Like, no, of course not, it'd be ridiculous, it'd be horrible. And very silly, and counterproductive, too. Very, very silly behavior. But it's always something to be worked on. It's, it's, it's something, you know, that, that improvements can be made, uh, you know, towards, which I think would be the goal. Unfortunately, the logical conclusion to the mantra that behavior which is born as a coping mechanism for abuse is, I mean, you, you get the J.K. Rowling thing, right? Like, you know, people justify all sorts of wacky stuff if they've been abused. And oftentimes, that's quite bad. Yeah, but that's exactly how insecurity makes you feel, like if everyone wanted to tell you that. Yeah, but you gotta work through that. Who cares if people come fast? I just take it as a compliment. I agree. I don't think it's that big of a deal.